闇に包まれる信仰の街精霊なる呪いが集う場所さあまじないの歌を歌いましょうフェイトグランドオーダーエピック・オブ・レムナント異端なるセイレム Hello there, everyone. Welcome back for some more Fate Grand Order. We're in Salem, and、uh, there is currently right now an event、uh, that I'm going to hold off on for as long as possible.、Um, the, there's, a, there's a more learning with manga, even more learning with manga quest. I have five days for it, and it's a, I, I got to stay away because of the fact that they apparently clearly say the name of some servants that are in this.、Uh, In this,、uh, this singularity,、uh, because they said in an update, like, hey, from now on, we're not hiding names anymore. So let's try and get through Salem.、Um, if push comes to shove, I will do it, because I want to see that, of course. Time limited is more important.、Uh, but for now, let's hop back in and continue with our Salem quest as we start with Unnot Before Dawn. What does Unnot mean? I mean, it sounds like, a, like to untie something. Oh, look at this little town. Tituba, you're Tituba, huh? I was going to say, is Tituba like a slave? But you're very clearly a servant that I've seen before. There we go, she says. Whew. Thank you for fetching the water, Tituba. I guess that will be my lunch today. Ah,、uh, please cheer up, Miss Abby. Where are our guests? Inside. Uncle went off to see the Reverend. I'm sure I'll be scolded again later. I see. I'm sorry to hear that. We've literally seen her with cat ears, so.、Uh, how's, how's the comms coming along, Mash? I double checked everything, Senpai, but I'm afraid. It's not working? Well, that's not good. I guess not even Da Vinci's inventions always work perfectly. <laughs> uh, Neza tries swallowing your oatmeal before you speak. Come to think of it, aren't you supposed to be, you know, smarter? Because stuffing your face when you're a guest in someone else's home isn't really a good look, you know? Especially when it's in a village that doesn't exactly seem to be overflowing with wealth. Besides, oats are for horses, not people. <laughs> I could do a much better job of preparing this dish, even with the same ingredients. This village just doesn't have the luxury of caring about food. I do feel hunger in this body. It must be an effect of this false incarnation. Of course, I expect we would be regarded with suspicion if we were never seen eating. Try not to be so tight about it. It'll make things a lot easier if we go around playing up our image as a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> I was actually able to check out the entire village. I also spread word about our troop a bit, so make sure you guys play along. You already finished investigating the area? It's not even afternoon yet. Way to go, sis. Like you always say, first things first. So, what is the story with this village? Like Abby said, this is definitely Salem in 1692. All the villagers' stories line up. They're Puritans who originally hail from England. Most of them are farmers, fishers, hunters, but there's also blacksmiths and cloth dryers, not to mention the Reverend. They're all industrious conists who, who wake up with the sun and spend their days hard at work. There are a number of warehouses at the wharf, along with boats headed for England and the West Indies. Now, that doesn't line up with our history. Salem didn't get a major wharf until. Did you say boats, as in sailors? M Medea? I mean,、um, that certainly makes sense, given this is a port town. You kind of seemed like Lily for a moment there. Don't you lump me in with that child. I guess there must have been an error in Sheba's observations, but still. I noticed other deviations from our history, too. People still live their lives here just like they did in our own late 17th century, but they're not all the same people. There are lots of folks here who weren't on the list of Salem's original residents. I haven't managed to figure out what they have in common, though. I see. Guess this means this isn't the Salem of our past. For my part, I scoped out the local topography around sunrise. And while the distinctive topography and architecture is still all there, the rest seems kinda off. 
There's a bunch of stuff that doesn't line up with the historical files Kaldia gave us. And as we suspected, this village is actually a cunningly crafted fake. So whoever built this place is only using 17th century Salem as a cover, but swapped out both the buildings and the citizens? Does this mean there's major historical change on par with the singularity from the incineration of humanity taking place? What about the people living in modern Salem? That's just it. There can't be more than 16, maybe 1700 people here. And I didn't see any place that could be used to keep 50,000 people who disappeared. 50,000 people. I wonder where they could have gone. And that's not our only major problem. There's also the witch trials. In our own history, 1692 was the very year when the accusations that started the witch trials began. This is a peaceful village. Or at least it looked that way on the surface. But I did also see farmers arguing pretty fiercely about who owned certain lands. They looked like they were nursing some major frustrations under their pious exteriors. I don't blame the girls here for wanting to step out and let their hair down for a bit, just like they did last night. I took a peek at the grain stores. It didn't look like they gave much to spare. Must have had a string of poor crops. Seemed to me like they just barely made it through the winter. This house just happens to be on the more prosperous side. There aren't many homes here that could accommodate guests. For that matter. What if the images we got from Sheba were falsified? I can't deny that's a possibility, but... Oh my my, are you already discussing your next performance? I hope that means you slept well, honored guest. Everyone should immediately look at you and go, Oh, you're a servant. No, no slave would dress this way. Oh, uh, uh Tituba, right? That's right, my name is Tituba. I'm Mr. Carter's servant. A servant? Her? I apologize for plying, prying, Tituba, but may I ask... You wish to know where I'm from? I was born on the island of Barbados in the Caribbean. A lot of people like me were. I may work for Mr. Carter now, but I used to work for Miss Abby's father. We were told that Abigail's parents passed away. That's right, they were both killed by native people in the forest. Miss Abby was very sad about it for a long time. I felt terrible for her. I don't know what would have become of her if her uncle hadn't come along. She's doing much better these days. It's wonderful to see her smiling and happy again, but... Now I hear she was nearly killed by wild beasts in the woods. She must have been frightened out of her mind. Killed by the natives? Native Americans? So this is why Geronimo said he would be putting Master in unnecessary danger if he came along. Most people be pretty wary of outsiders after having their parents killed. But not her. She still seems real trusting. Yes, she really is a very kind girl. She even goes out of her way to talk to servants like myself. This word is hilarious in English. I hope you don't mind if we ask another question. Last night, there was another girl besides Abigail's friends who... Oh, would you look at the time? I'm so sorry, but I need to get back to work. I hope you enjoy your stay. Thanks for the food. Master, a word if you don't mind. What do you make of that servant? That she's suspiciously good-looking? You mean pre 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 preternaturally beautiful? No, I thought she was rather home homely. Homely. Do you see her outfit? Do you see them yabos? Those are some. That's not what they. Okay. Is something wrong, Medea? I mean, then again, then again, is something wrong, Medea? It's not safe to stay here. This place is being subjected to something more powerful than we realize. Really, I'd say this place brings back some nice memories. The wind whistling through the gaps in the walls. Sour smell of horse shit. I hate that smell. The head-splitting sound of church bells. The bland, pasty food. The boring, British small talk. Those hardly sound like pleasant memories. At any rate, don't forget that we have a duty to help those missy f missing 50,000 people, Robin. All right, sorry. I almost forgot about frog legs here hopping along after us. Would you care to say that again? Now don't start that again, you two. Hum? Tituba didn't do anything wrong. Why are you doing this? Oh, no. I think that came from outside. That was Abby's voice. Guess the head of the house is back. 
Step aside, Abigail. I'm the one who deserves to be punished, Uncle, not her. Didn't you say that yourself? Miss Abby. The other girls and their parents say otherwise. They say Tituba taught you a heretical ritual, and that you all snuck out last night to attempt it. I had them promise to keep quiet about it so that rumors don't spread around the village. What in the world were you doing in the forest in the middle of the night, Abigail? I... Is something wrong, Mr. Carter? Mr. Tanner, I'm afraid my niece was doing something even worse than I believed last night. Unfortunately, I can no longer permit her to attend your production. What? But that's not fair. Come on, we were all kids once, right? This is no mere mischief to be simply excused. It is fortunate you were there to ensure no one was hurt. But Tituba must be punished and harshly for filling the children's heads with this nonsense. She will no longer be permitted to be in their company. Punished? No, Uncle, please. She only told me because I begged her to. Please, Uncle, punish me instead. I'll take whatever punishment you see fit. Even lashes, so please. It's okay, Miss Abby. It'll be all... I'll be all right. If I may, Mr. Carter, I understand how frustrating it must be to have a young girl under your charge running off at night. You must have been worried sick about Abby to have come so deep into the woods searching for her. That said, I know that Wabi sometimes go after livestock, but I thought they usually stayed away from people these days. That's true. But it's not just beasts we need to worry about. The nearby forest is very dangerous. Some even say this land is cursed, that God himself has forsaken our village. Abigail. Abigail. She just ran off. Mr. Carter. Leave her be. As for you, Tituba. You are no longer to talk about your hometown, no matter how much the other girls beg you. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Carter, I promise I won't do it again. I'm so sorry about this. What should we do, Senpai? Oh, we look for clues about the demon god. I think it's Mr. Carter. I couldn't agree more. Something is definitely happening here. I see. So we'll split up into teams and investigate the village further. Understood. Our goal is to find someone trustworthy. Alright, Neza, what do you say we go check out the ocean? Detection ability. Full power. I'll stay in Mr. Carter's house, Master. It'd be dangerous to go around dressed like this, anyway. And there's something nagging me about Tituba. I'll keep an eye on Mr. Carter, too, while I'm at it. Got it. Sounds good. It's interesting because there's like only two servants left that I actually like don't know like I don't know their identities of so it's like I know who they're both I I have a strong feeling of one servant who we're going to be seeing soon in this also interesting that they're not connected like there's no connections between them there's no line we're just going here still no battles holy crap people were like yeah this one's super short and then people were like yeah, it's short if you skip the story. Because there's a, there's more writing than Shimosa, apparently. Those must be the traveling performers. What were they thinking coming all this way to perform in a village like this? What a disgraceful outfit. I could never let my child see that. I hope they put on a play about romance between aristocrats. Hi there, young man. I hope you'll come out to see the Tanner Company perform. I thought I was used to being stared at, but this is something altogether different. Remember, we're supposed to be entertainers now, so you can't get angry no matter what they say to you. I know, but I can't help being French. Ha <laughs> ha! I can't help being French, you know? You don't get me. They think to yourself, what are you doing here, you French man, you know? I'm just as out of place here. Besides, you can pass as an educated gentleman as long as you keep quiet. In my case, I just come across as a Roma who came to the New World to make my fortune. 
Roma, of course, being the proper term for gypsy. Those, these villagers may not care for the British army, but they don't have much love for the French either. In fact, this British settlement in France are currently at odds with one another. Only 40 miles north, the French army led Native Americans against a northern British colony, completely wiping it out. Naturally, the British retaliated, and the respective colonies ended up fighting a fearsome battle. The competition for resources is fierce between colonies. War is all but inevitable. Truth be told, my great-grandfather, the first head of our family, was part of the French colonial army himself. He was deployed to camp- Whoa! Oh! Oh! We get a reference! Oh! Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen. They mentioned Canada. It finally happened. Mwah. I'm just happy because pretty much every everything always forgets that Canada exists. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing my place. So he was deployed to Canada, but he must have taken part in skirmishes around this area as well. I see. No wonder you have so much complex feelings about this place. Retaliation after retaliation, soldiers sacrificing their lives to avenge the loss of their comrades. Is that why you and Robin are always arguing? You should really stop taking shots at him. You're barking up the wrong tree there. He's the one who keeps provoking me. I think that's just how Robin is. And you're at least partially to blame for that. As long as you're going to be working together, you'll need to find ways to get along. Sometimes other people just have their own way of doing things, and that's okay. I'm trying to be as accommodating as I can, I just... Oh, isn't that... I said that girl we saw last night, I've been looking for her too. The one with the horn? Yeah, hi. I can't believe a Whateley is out and about in broad daylight. A what? A what? Whateley? Whateley? What's a Whateley? You've got a lot of nerve coming out now when you never show your face at church. Grumble, grumble. I'm just going to buy whale oil. Whale oil? And just what are you going to do with that? Are you going to use it for another blasphemous spell or... Pardon me, has this girl wronged you somehow? Who are you? Oh, you're one of the traveling performers. That's right, my name is Sanson. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Tell me, what possible use would this girl have for oil besides lighting a lantern? What could she possibly have done to warrant such treatment? W what business is it of yours? Ugh. Charles, we just talked about this. Are you threatening me? Uh, no, that was not my intention. I apologize if I offended you. What a strange man, muttering. He's gone now. Well, I guess I worked out in the end. So you do live in this village. The fugitive from last night? We are performers. That's right, sorry for frightening you. She hasn't let her guard down at all. Would you mind if we asked about what happened last night? Anything you could tell us would be a big help. That really surprised us seeing something like that happen right after we got here. Did Abby say something to you? Oh, so you're a friend of Abigail's? That makes us easier. Stop it. Nobody's friends with me. Lavinia. My name is Lavinia Whiteley. Everyone in Salem knows my family and hates them. Did you think that old man was just yelling at me for no reason? Uh, sorry, your horn just grew. Uh, did anyone else see that? Did, did anyone else? Okay, her horn grew. Okay, he wasn't. The whole village hates what we're doing. I don't blame them. So your family is tr tying you down. I'm Charles Henry Sanson. I may be French, but I'm not your enemy. Are you defending me? Why are you being nice to me? Is it because how I look? I'm an albino. Oh, she's the albino. Okay. Not Abigail. That makes sense. Yeah, you are. That's... Yeah, that's... Yeah, okay. I'm an albino. A freak. A living skeleton. All your albumism means is that you were out born without melanine. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And then, like, Matahari just like, pokes him. It's like, melanin hasn't been discovered yet! It's just a part of who you are. I don't find it ugly at all. However, it would behoove you to eat better, if you don't mind me saying so. You're an idiot. If you want your show to succeed here, you should stay away from me. We would never charge admission to children. 
Isn't that right, Matahari? Of course not. We hope to see you at our show, Lavinia. If you like, we'd be happy to provide you a seat where you can watch in privacy without worrying about the rest of the audience. Then I just have one request. What's that? Don't tell Abby I was there last night. If you do, I'll tell everyone else what I saw. I'll tell them you used magecraft to kill those beasts. I saw the whole thing. Uh-oh. Why is she so certain about that? So you wish us to keep your presence a secret from Abigail, do you? I can see this is very important to you. So, what will you do? All right, we promise we won't tell her. Don't talk to me again, okay? I'm afraid we can't promise that. Hmm, interesting. Guess we got a problem on our hands. Would an ordinary child be so unbothered after seeing a fight like that? The wait, the wahat, wahat, is it waitly? Waitly? Whatly? The Whatly family? I'm gonna say Whatly. The Whatly family? Hmm? I think we better look into them as well. That's all well and good, but... You kind of look to me like you cared more about her than her possible connection to the Demon God Pillar. Are you sure we can trust her? I am, yes. Really now? Well, never mind that for the time being. Let's go report to Master. I wonder how Robin and the others are doing. Robin's just like in his swim trunks at the ocean. Oh, well, here we are. Robin, suggestion. Listen. What is it, Prince Neza? If you got something secret to tell me, make it quick. Because there's a sweet little tavern over there with my name on it. <laughs> hey! On duty. Drink not, want not. I mean, Robin, listen. Have a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, what is it already? This area, strange. Unrealistic. Therefore... No sense in sneaking. We capture villagers, crush them individually. Rational, efficient. We can handle anyone who cons resists. Concern unnecessary. I see, no wonder you're cast in a period piece. Naturally. You're kind of chafing under the whole show, huh? Methodical investigation thing? Or slow methodical re <laughs> reading tough. I don't blame you. If we wanted to run in and start throwing our weight around to find out what we're looking for quickly, we could do that. We're servants and they're just ordinary people. It'd be way easier to handle than monsters. That said, I won't pretend like I've got everything all figured out, but... Even though we can feel the runaway demon god pillars aura all around us, we're still trying to figure out what's really going on here. Still haven't been at Kaldi all that long. You weren't with us, traveling back in the time during the restoration of humanity. Back then, we had to be real careful not to interfere too much. We could have ended up changing history. There's little chance of that happening here, but we still gotta be careful. Careful not to bring along anything that didn't exist in the times so that we could get in here to begin with. And we're dealing with this false incarnation nonsense weakening us. If we just stormed in and made enemies of the whole town, we might have wound up dead. It would have brought the whole militia against us or something. We always had the option of brute force where necessary in other singularities, but here I think there might actually be the worst thing we could do. I'm pretty sure Master's picked up on this too, you know. If you were to ask him, he'd tell you that violence isn't the answer here in Salem. It's kind of like we're trying to make our way through dense fog with someone else holding onto our lifeline. Don't know about you, but I sure don't want to accidentally break one of this world's rules that we don't know about and just get knocked right off the stage. As long as we don't know who we're up against, it's best to act like each step could be our last. Besides, we're out here trying to keep these people safe, remember? It's a peaceful village of innocent people. I doubt that. That's gonna change. We have no call to go around hard in them, right? Pondering. Reconsidering. Understood. We'll play along. Really? Awesome. Good to see you can listen, unlike a certain frog I could mention. Right then, let's go try some of that Caribbean imported rum. No drinking hinders investigation. Out of the question. Come on, you're kidding, right? Don't get all straight laced with me now, your highness. So, the sea is right past those wheat fields. This whole area must be grassland. I read that land like this that's shared and managed by the whole village is called a common here. This should be the side Abby ran off to. I wonder where she could be now. Uh, by the way, Senpai, did you think there was something a little strange about Medea? 
I thought I was just imagining things before Ray shifted, but now... Yeah, she was acting strange. So you thought so too, then. She just doesn't seem like herself somehow. At first I thought she might just be upset about how he asked her to come to a place that's best known for its witch trials. But then she was eager to help me set up the comms device last night. I'm just not sure what to think anymore. Hmm, I'll see what I can find out. Okay, thank you, Senpai. Of course, I hope I'm wrong about this. We made it through the bounded field and into Salem. No matter how peaceful the scenery may be, this is still enemy territory. It's eminently possible we've played into their hands without realizing it. Look, there's a golden rabbit hopping around there. Huh? Where did that come from? A gold rabbit? Where is it? Wait, that's not a gold rabbit. That's golden hair. It's Abby. Don't tease me like that, senpai! Oh, you really wanted to see a gold rabbit. Hmm. Oh, hello, Mr. Ringmaster. Hello, Mash. Did you come along all this way to look for me? I'm sorry for running off like that. I promise I'll go home soon. I would just like to stay out here a little longer. Abby. I'm sorry I made someone as wonderful and nice as you worry, Mash. I know it was all my fault. And I know that Uncle is just being sensible. He's completely right. I was thoughtless and I put all my friends in danger. I even ended up getting to Tuba in awful trouble when we didn't. she didn't do anything wrong. And after she told me such wonderful tales from her homeland too. After all that, I shouldn't be allowed to watch your show like I did nothing wrong. I don't know what to say to her. Is there any way we can cheer her up, Senpai? Why don't we take a little walk? A, a walk? Okay, I love going on walks. There's a path to the beach down that hill over there. The wind's not too cold today, so I bet it's perfect weather for a walk. It's really nice out, right? Yes, it's lovely. Oh, I almost forgot. Uncle said I'm not supposed to talk to the guests. What about talking to friends? Oh yes, that's a wonderful idea. You're fun, Mr. Ringmaster. What are some of your favorite things, Abby? My favorite things? I'm so glad you asked, Mr. Ringmaster. I have so many, it's hard to keep track. Let's see, one of them is definitely pancakes. I adore fluffy pancakes with lots of but Meanwhile, Goro Akechi's like, yo, did somebody say fluffy pancakes? Lots of butter and crispy bacon on top. Yo, bacon crispy, y you need it crispy. I also, and more than anything, I love mashed potatoes covered with piping hot gravy. There's nothing better than that. Gulp. Is is the is the joke that her name is Mash? That does sound incredibly delicious. Gravy, huh? I've heard of it before, but I've never actually had it. What's it like? Brown goop. Well, okay, no, here's the thing. American gravy, Americans are like, well, what about white gravy? And like, that's not a thing here. When I see American white gravy, I'm like, what the frick is that? That's not gravy. Like, to me, the only gravy is brown gravy. Like, I, American gravy is weird. Oh, goodness, Smash, you've never had gravy before? Do they not make it in Europe? And she's like, yes, Europe. It's a script. Well, is Smash European? That's a good question. I always assumed she was Japanese, but M.A.S.H. is... is It's not a spoiler about what her nationality is, right? Um, People said M.A.S.H. is an Israeli name? Oh. Huh. Well, it, I, it, there's no actual answer, but I guess the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, I always assumed she was Japanese, but the name Kyrie Light is not Japanese, and Mash isn't even either. That's it. Mash means Matthew in like old English, so, huh? I never thought about that. It's a scrumptious sauce made from using the juices of a cooked meat. The grown-ups all like to put it on turkey and steak, but I really love it on potatoes. I put it on everything on my plate. It's not the kind of thing you have every day, either. You only get to enjoy it on Thanksgiving. It's too bad you and the rest of the Tanner Company didn't come during a holiday, Mr. Ringmaster. It has been a while since we celebrated anything, though. I see, I'm sorry to hear that. 
Still, the meal that Tituba made for us was uh, very good in its own right. I'd never had porridge before either, so it was quite a uh, novel. It's okay, Mash, I understand. You don't have to be so polite. Tituba does the best she can with what little we have. But I know that porridge isn't something seasoned travelers like you would really love. I'm sorry, I guess you saw right through me. Tituba cares a lot about being frugal, though I'm not sure why. Maybe it has to do with her own beliefs? So when she makes porridge, she'll water down the milk, skimp out a lot on the honey. I'm not sure if Uncle just doesn't mind, or if he likes how she saves him money, but he never says a word about it. There are so many things Salem is missing. Do you like the village, Abby? Oh, you want to know how I feel about Salem? Nobody's ever asked me that before. I'm not quite sure how to answer. Were you born here, Abby? Yes, I was. There was a comet in the sky the year I was born. It was so big you could even see it during the day. I don't remember seeing it myself, but I'm sure it must have been a wonderful sight. Anyway, I'm sure Salem pales in comparison to someplace like Boston. But even this town has a lot going on for it. Uncle told me that its name comes from the word Jerusalem. Re oh! Huh! Alright. Cool facts. I, l I love learning little facts like that. You know all about Jerusalem, right? Every good Christian does, and you just see all of us look at each other and like, yes, Christian. In the name of the Father and of the Son. It's, I still think it's funny that, like, you could literally break up fate into, like, who are all the servants who would, like, devoutly go to church? Like, Jean and Vlad are, like, they're there at the front. It's the holy city that was once ruled by both King David and King Solomon. The Knights of the Crusades headed east to find it, but our Pilgrim Fathers set sail for the west instead. When they arrived at the New World, they founded the towns of Plymouth, Boston, and Salem. It must have been really hard when they first arrived, but now ships come here from all around the world. And you saw how big our rye fields are, right? Can you believe this all used to be woodland once? God was kind enough to let us put down roots and settle here. We're truly blessed. Meanwhile, back home, Geronimo is like, just like, I feel a cold wind. A cold white wind. You're very proud about being part of a pioneer village, aren't you? Of course I am. It's where I was born and raised, after all. Isn't everyone proud of where they grew up? Yes, that's right. I think I can understand how you feel, if only a little. That is how history was made, after all. Plus, at this time, New England was still a British colony and hadn't declared its independence as America, and she's like, what the frick are you talking about? America? Who's that? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, just forget I said anything. That's right. The people of Salem are still technically British, even if they did become colonists to seek their independence. I have to remember they're not servants and don't have any modern-day knowledge. Have you ever been anywhere else besides Salem Abbey? Well, uh... No, not yet. I haven't left Salem in my whole life. Really? Not even once? No, not even once. Everything I know about Boston I heard from others. I'm sorry for misleading you. I just love hearing about other towns and other countries. Say, Mr. Ringmaster, you and your company have performed all over Europe and the colonies, right? What sort of show did you put on in Boston? Did you stop by Jamestown, too? Is it true that New York has stores where you could buy tea and porcelain from the Orient? Oh, I really wish I could see your show, but since I can't, could you at least tell me about the different countries you've been to? Would that be alright, Senpai? Uh... Sure, okay, well, the uncle would say no, but we can't tell you everything, though. We'll talk to you right now. Really, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Ringmaster. That's great. I love hearing about foreign countries, too. How do you feel about your uncle? Uh, uncle Carter is very responsible and quiet and strict. Everyone in the village is very pious, but I think they are all very stubborn, and they don't like to admit when they made a mistake. But when uncle starts talking to them in his calm voice... They always seem to accept what he says. I see, so the other villagers really trust him, don't they? Yes, they do. He teaches at Harvard Divinity School in Boston, after all. Divinity School. What's that? Hmm. He studies the Orient there. I don't really know what he researches, but he always has fascinating things to share about foreign countries. He's told me some really unusual stories about faraway lands, like the Qing Dynasty, I think? And the Mughal Empire and a place called uh, Zipang, they're also fascinating. 
I see, it sounds like your uncle is where your love of foreign countries comes from then, huh? I guess he must be. Well, I do love hearing stories like that, but... My very favorite thing is when I tell them to my friends and let my imagination run wild. I especially enjoy telling them to Lavinia. She's always so interested to hear them. Lavinia, is that a friend of yours? Yes, yeah, she's the same age as me, so she was also born in the year of the comet. She's the very best. I always love talking with her. None of the other girls here have much interest in foreign countries, so they only ever ask boring questions. But Lavinia loves to read. She knows all sorts of things. Sometimes I even think she knows more than Uncle. Sometimes we even come here to watch the sea together. But... Hmm... Did you and Lavinia have a fight or something? Yes, this time you saw right through me, Mr. Ringmaster. I must have upset her somehow because lately she just won't talk to me. I asked her about it, but she kept refusing to answer, so after a while I got upset too. But she's still my best, most cherished friend. Being apart has helped me realize that. I noticed there were a number of friends of yours at the secret gathering last night, though. Does that mean Lavinia wasn't among them? I secretly sent her an invitation, but she never showed up, just like I knew she wouldn't. Wonder, could that be the girl who ran off into the forest? I talked to Tatuba about this and she gave me some advice. She told me to be honest with myself and think about whether I'd done something to hurt her without knowing or meaning to. She recommended I ask myself three questions. What were they? First, have I pretended to be someone I'm not? Second, have I jumped to any conclusions about her? And third, have I been neglecting to pay attention to tomorrow because I'm still nursing a grudge from yesterday? Tatuba said that? I see. After that, I realized there were a lot of things Lavinia could be angry at me for, and now I don't know what to apologize for first. Um, may I say something? Does Lavinia have white hair and very pale skin? Yes, that's right. Have you already met her, Mash? Yes, I actually saw her in the forest last night. Uh-oh. I guess I hadn't told you yet. Really? Do you mean it? Then she showed up after all. I'm so glad. I'm just sorry I didn't notice she was there. Now I have something else to apologize to her about. So that was Lavinia, huh? Wow, so you saw her too, Mr. Ringmaster? Some people tease her about the way she looks. Some people go further, saying she looks downright sickly. I mean, she does have a horn coming out of her head. That is something that I feel like needs to be addressed. But I think she's beautiful. She just looks like a star fairy, don't you think? If you ever make fun of her, I'll never forgive you. Don't worry, neither Senpai nor any of us would ever do that. Hey look, I can see a sailboat on the other side of the pasture. It sounds kind of heated over there. I hear people shouting angrily, did a new ship just dock? The sailors can be kind of rough. The wharf is just past this grassland, but... Eek! Senpai, that was a gunshot! Oh, it came from the direction of the wharf. Hope it's not a mutiny. It's the Indians. The Indians are attacking. Huh? From the sea? Didn't one of ours head for the wharf? Uh, yes, I believe Robin and Neza did. Uh-oh. Abby, are you alright? Let's get back to the village before... Uh, huff, huff. Abby? Outside can't go outside. Outside Salem, nothing but pain and suffering. Everyone who comes from outside is... Oh, she's having a freak out. This is so long! Damn Oriental! Who do you think you are pointing your blade at me? You ain't leaving here alive until you get down on the floor and beg for mercy. A blade? Preposterous. Third-rate seaman. The true blade of my fire-tipped spear is red-hot. Your flimsy arms, will they continue to blunder? The next strike will be no mere scratch. Rahel, Miss Wench is off her rocker. Where the hell did she get that thing from anyway? It was amazing. Did you just deflect our shots? Was that magic? Are ye acrobats or something? Not acrobat. I am martial artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about this, gents. Would you mind putting away those scary-looking muskets and knives now? You're just trying to relax for a big show. Hope you can understand. Oi! You're the ones who started it! And I absolutely understand you're upset. Can we just keep it cool since this is a tavern and all? 
What's the big idea, Dezza? What are you trying to pull here? You would have me remain silent in the face of such shame. Uh, what's going on here? You two fighting? Indeed. Affirmation. Of course. Now is the time. Let's slip the dogs of war. Uh, Ringmaster. Glad to see someone else with their head on straight here. Go on, talk some sense into this idiot. These seamen. The root of evil. Therefore, I shall cut them down where they stand. Oh yeah? You're still on about that, wench? If you're trying to draw in customers, you're doing a terrible job. And what are you supposed to be, anyway? Another Oriental or something? That's right, I'm talking to ye. So you're the ringmaster, eh? What kind of company are you running letting freaks run wild like this? Ah, uh, wait, what's happening here? Please listen, master. To begin, once we entered this tavern. Matcha there sat at gambling table, began drinking. Hey now. Whatever became of the mission. He lost the dice more and more, even demanded I bet our travel expenses. Whoa, 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 keep that to yourself. Nothing better to do, so I followed, followed his example, joined him, gambling table. Had no idea what I was doing. Beer was so bad it was undrinkable. Then, at my lowest moment, third-rate seaman gestured towards me called me a prostitute, and began touching me near my waist. That I did not mind. He did treat me to some milk. That's surprising. Next, he made me sit on his lap, told me to pour him another glass. That sort of frivolity I also do not mind. Are sure you don't mind even a little? I do not mind. However, this seaman remained in high spirits, Yet, as he kept drinking, burst into tears. He began to complain, how sad my body is. Can you believe it? This body, given to me by Tai Zechren himself. How dare this man appraise this body as sad? How dare he? That's what bothers you about this, huh? That's about when I couldn't take it anymore and try to go smooth things over. According to that sailor, this is so light that he figured she wasn't eating well enough. And that got him thinking about the kid he left behind in his own country. Yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that. So why the hell did this wench of yours go and pull a weapon on me? Don't worry about it too much, young ringmaster. This guy's just a big old lecher. He was just trying to get your wench to feel sorry for him so he could take him to her, uh, take her to bed. He does it all the time. Sure ain't much fun to be had in a Puritan port town like this, after all. Yeah, neither we sailors nor ye performers belong here, so we might as well get along. Ha <laughs> ha! True, Nezza was out of line, I apologize. Oh yeah? And you'll be buying us all a drink? Well, ain't that thoughtful of your ringmaster. You might be young, but you got a good head on your shoulders. I did nothing wrong. Don't worry about it, Master's just putting on an act himself. At least I think he is. Shall throw all of their tea into the ocean. Get that out, it's still a century too early for that. <sighs> What's going on? What's all the commotion about? I rushed here as fast as I could, but all I see now is people drinking happily. Come on, what happened here anyway? It's a long story. I see. I suppose I understand. I'm just glad matters were resolved before they got out of hand. Relieved sigh. Ha, performers, eh? If the storm out in the bay keeps us stuck here, maybe we'll go see our show for ourselves. A storm? Has there been a stretch of poor weather out in the bay? Is that why you're all hanging out in this tavern? You got it, Specs. Gotta say, though, I'm surprised you even thought to come to perform here in Salem at all. What sort of show will you be putting on? Oh, well, we were thinking of... Hold it, all of you. I want to hear what you have to say, too. They say you're going around telling people you're traveling performers. But I don't buy it. Help. Uh, Ringmaster, that guy's been sitting in the corner for a while now. He's one of the villagers, not a sailor. I run a general store here in Salem. I got diabetes. Wilfred Brimley is my name. I've been to Boston a number of times, and I've never seen entertainers like you before. I know there's a lot of strange folk in theater, but no one would ever come to Salem looking to get rich. Unless you're secretly up to some dirty, shameful business like that sailor said. For that matter, you're awfully young to be a troop leader. I'm gonna show us you performed anyway. 
This will be our first. What was that? Oh, it's not what it sounds like. She means this will be our first time performing with our current members, naturally. Another problem on our hands, huh? T uh, Ringmaster, please let me handle this. I have some notes from Kaldi for situations just like this. Sir, I can see you care deeply about this town and I understand your concerns. But I assure you that despite our appearances, we at the Tanner Company are good God-fearing people. We may not be Puritans or Quakers, but we always perform with gratitude for all of God's blessings. We pray every day, and as long as there's a church nearby, we make it a point to attend Mass as well. On our way here, we heard about a village in New England that no other performers will go near. A village where good people live pious lives. A place that truly lives up to its name, the city upon a hill. As fellow Christians, we hope to learn from the people of Salem's example. And if we can bring them some joy in return through the only trade we know, we could ask for nothing more. A city upon a hill, hum. I can see that you mean, old battle. And given what happened to that little tussle earlier, I can also see that you want to blend into our town without causing trouble. Even if you are a bit on the unusual side. Hmm. That said, I don't want you leading us into temptation. People say that we Puritans hate plays, novels, and dancing. That's giving us too much credit. It's not wrong, but it's not quite right either. We do our best to minimize those distractions in our lives precisely because we are drawn to them. Every child knows that plays are fun and exciting. This tavern certainly sees its share of people coming in looking to relax and enjoy themselves. The people of Zvillas purposely go around turning blind eyes to each other's failings, as long as they only involve a glass of hard cider. We are all of us frail vessels, and we do not invite further temptation to our lives. That is my only concern about your troop. Our insider is pretty great stuff. I understand that as performers we may not be welcome. But does that mean we're not allowed to be here at all? That is not my decision to make. But if you're willing to demonstrate what sort of play you're mean to put on, that might go away towards changing the people of Salem's minds. If insist on performing, I'd be willing to speak to the Wever, Reverend and other respected villagers on your behalf. Why not try putting on a small show just for them? And getting approval for the village that way. I see, Senpai. I think this could be a good opportunity. Deaths. Totes. We refuse to do so. I mean to ply your trade without regards to the villagers' sense of piety. I prefer you leave. The barkeep tells me your guests are Professor Carter. All the more so in that case. If you don't want to be hauled down before the judge, you should go somewhere that's more welcoming to outsiders like Rhode Island or Pennsylvania. This is Massachusetts. This may be a small village, but in the eyes of God and his justice and all are all upon us all. I don't want to see anyone hanged here. H hanged? About four years ago, I think, I saw a criminal hanged in Boston's town square. There was talk of witches and foul play. Perhaps you heard about it yourselves. Oh, witches, you say? Now that's something we'd like to hear all about. Finally, something relevant to the mission. If I may, Senpai, I think we should do as this man suggests. It's a good opportunity, and would make our investigation considerably easier. Sounds good, though I am worried about the others. I can see you have concerns. I believe there was a play in the book Anderson gave us that should be perfect. If it's alright with you, Senpai, shall I go with that one? Yeah, let's do it! It's the only one we really got, really. Understood, then I'll speak to this man and request his assistance. Now, we should head back to our rooms and get ready to perform. Oh, and if you're wondering about Abby, I escorted her back to the town center. She was a little shaken up by the gunshots, but she regained her composure soon enough. At least, I think she did. That was a 40-minute cutscene. And we finally have gameplay. <laughs> like, holy crap! Now, I really shouldn't use her here. I really shouldn't because of plot reasons, right? So, I think I'm going to try to avoid that. So, let's go with, um... Uh, where's my kill berserker? And you know what? Let's, um, switch you off then for... Because if that's a... Assassin, that's good. Caster gets a bonus. So let's go with, um... Let's go with you. Yeah, let's go with you. And then you get the... 
switch that. Okay. Eight. Sounds good. Ah, uh, well. Maybe we'll get to, um, to you. There. Okay. Actually, that's, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, wow, you guys weren't kidding about this being a wordy one. And yet I am enjoying it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply enjoying this story right now. How long has it been since I last saw a play? What a waste of time. Oh, what a waste of perfectly good lamp oil. What nonsense is this? We worked so hard to build our town hall and to fill it with such frivolity. I don't even see the reverend here. Where is he? I'm told he had to attend someone who fell ill and but can't make it tonight. Well, this should be enough. All right, Ringmaster Tanner, we're all here. Go ahead and start the show. Let me just check on the actors. Okay, everyone, remember, just as we planned, you should already be familiar with the play from looking over at Caldia. We may not have been able to bring the actual script, but you should all have your lines from the notes I gave you. Matahari, you'll play the Queen of Sheba. A strikingly flat boy in role? Hmm? Sounds right up my alley. Robin, you'll play King Solomon. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Senpai, uh, I'm sorry, Ringmaster will lead everyone through the production. You'll have multiple roles, so you're gonna be busy. Hey, you've been a huge help, Mash. Nice to have an assistant. Thank you, Ringmaster. It's been a fun change of place from, from my usual work. Of course, now we have to actually perform. I'll be helping out from the side of the stage. As the narrator and prompter. I did have important things to do back at the house, you know. This is part of our mission, Medea. That's right, we need to let these people get to know all of us, albeit carefully. That said, I'm only a bit player this time around. Don't screw this up, Robin. I don't know why they picked me. I said I was fine being a tree. But why do I keep feeling like someone's staring at me? It's funny because he, his noble phantasm is a tree. The gaze of our audience. Act now or not at all. Show off. What's the judge? I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule for my guests, your honor. I am not here as a drama critic. I will not judge the quality of the performance. It would hardly be fair of me to go around at poos espousing Puritan values after all. I will merely be determining whether this production is suited for the good Christian people of Salem. A perfectly sensible choice. Can you tell me what the company will be performing today, Miss Mash? Of course, Mr. Carter. Tonight we'll be performing a story from scripture. Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Well, that sounds lovely. I can't wait. I'm afraid we don't have any velvet curtains, but please go ahead and get started. Oh! Yo! Sprite! I love it! Mash narrator, ahem. Good evening, distinguished guests, and thank you for accepting our invitation. I'm getting a phone call, I gotta go answer that. Yeah, needed to confirm that I'm picking up my new car tomorrow. Very excited. On behalf of the Tanner Company, I would like to say that we cannot express our gratitude to you for taking your time to be here this evening. Tonight, we'll be performing a story about the most enigmatic queen in the Bible. Gonna be real, you know nothing about the Queen of Sheba. She was the queen of a prosperous southern nation, somewhere south of Arabia, or perhaps to the east of Africa. This queen was drawn to King Solomon, known far and wide for his peerless wisdom, and decided to journey across the desert to meet him. Tell me, do you know what a true desert is like? An endless sea of sand that stretches out past the horizon. A land of death, where not a single drop of water can be found. To cross it, the queen ordered hundreds of camels, accompanied by thousands of soldiers and attendants, to form a single file procession. Each camel was laden with incredible treasures, gold, jewels, and precious frankincense. 
Our story begins with the queen perched upon a camel, surveying her procession. How depressing. I don't mind traveling by camel. But what will I do if I travel all the way to Jerusalem, but still cannot meet with King Solomon? The tie-ins with the, the overall Grand Order story are amazing, actually. I'm really enjoying this. Why does that weigh on you so, your highness? You have thought of nothing else for these entire two months of travel. We are two days away from the Red Sea Harbor, and Jerusalem is still farther. Besides, see for yourself what mountains of treasure you bring. 120 talents of gold, and more than even 20 camels can carry. Sapphires, ambles, opals, garnets, and other precious jewels, the finest frankincense our nation has. Never before has such a vast array of treasure been brought on such a journey across the desert. More even than that, your majesty's beauty is renowned far and wide. King or not, there is no man alive who would refuse you. Is that so? Fate to white. Wow. We're just gonna spoil that twist, huh? All right. Sounds good. I... I wonder who she's going to be. <sighs> I'm not so sure about... Th well, I guess it's now this voice. I'm not so sure about that. These treasures are merely tokens of my good intentions to show the people that I am trustworthy. The true cargo I bear lies within my heart. For this man was born to be king and has been blessed by God himself. Oh my god. Sanson, you became that dude. I'm afraid I do not understand. This may be a great key. This man may be a great king, but he is still just a man. If you flatter him, he will grow conceited. If you appeal to his greed, riches will blind him. If he is truly born to be a king, is that not all the more reason for him to rest on the laurels of his lineage? It is true that Israel is a much more peaceful and far is is much more peaceful and far easier to trade with now than it was under the previous king, but I still have my doubts about his wisdom. Just keep such thoughts to yourself now that the harbor is in sight. One never knows where the ears of the king might be lurking. As you wish. What's this? Caravan leader! Something is amiss at the head of the procession! It appears to be an ambush by bandits! They never learn, do they? We should be nearing an oasis. Thieves often congregate in such areas, so I expected some issues as we drew near. Some poor fools cannot resist the temptation our caravan offers in this possibility of its riches. If you expected as much, then I trust you've also prepared for such attacks. Is there anything I could do to help drive them off? Surely you jest, your majesty. Rest assured that all is taken care of. We have plenty of capable fighters at our command. These fighters do not work merely for money. They are warriors of honor, faithful to queen and country. I will send them out alongside our own soldiers post-haste. My, but aren't we pompous all of a sudden? Not very well, then. I will leave you and your fighters to your task. Is it a f Oh, it's a f It's a fight in the play. Can't say I expected that. That's kind of cool. That's really interesting. Huh. Hungry, hungry. Well, it's a good thing we didn't pick Abby, then. So, I am... Almost, like... It's really funny that, like, yeah, like, they just straight up were like... Because I've... I'll be honest. Certain characters... I see a lot of art of, and because of that, as time goes on, like, you know... There's a few whose names I couldn't avoid. I'm 90% sure that's who she is, right? Um, now, mind you, the other servant who we don't know who will probably be seen as this goes on somewhere, and I have a guess as to where she will appear, uh, being the um, caster of Okeanos, I have no clue who she is. So we'll have to hold off for that, of course. But uh, they just straight up told us who, who Tituba is. They didn't even hide it. Which is fair. Honestly, it's fine. Alright. What what else do we got here? 
Some more bandits. Yeah. Soulless damned. All right, well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get that attack bonus. Let's do this. And let's do this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one, two, three. See how that goes. Because even more buffs will be very nice. She gets a bigger one. Let's see. Let's get the big hitty. Just a little bit more. Will this do it? Yep. And, you know, I, I actually want us to cut back and for them to go like, What is this magecraft on the stage? That is not good god fear in Bible play. We'll see. Oh my god, are we gonna do, like, the whole play and have, like, all of it out? Because I'm kind of... It's gonna be interesting when we get to Solomon, right? Right? Um... Let's go with, um... Let's go with Ozzy, 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 Oi, Oi, Oi. Uh, we'll go with Kill Caster. Yeah, and we'll bring you up. Actually, we'll just bring you up there. Okay. Still working on getting him. I still need a couple more rider tokens, and I missed the last opportunity for it. So it's like I still gotta, still gotta buff him up. But he's ridiculously powerful, anyways, right now. Just gotta get him a bit more. I love Narrator Mash. Thanks to their capable bodyguards, the Queen's procession easily fended off their attackers. Soon after resuming their journey to Jerusalem, the procession arrived at the Red Sea Harbor. The harbor was packed with throngs of camels, and there was a lively din surrounding left and right from the merchants awaiting ships and cargo. The Queen's caravan rented hundreds of ships and then set sail for the north of the Red Sea. In time, the massive fleet arrived at the northern edge of the Gulf of Aqaba at a seaport called Ezion Geber, built by King Solomon himself. The people of Israel were surely taken aback by the appearance of this mysterious queen and the untold wealth she brought with her. This magnificent scene, a magnif- mag I hate that word. Magnificent scene of the queen meeting King Solomon has been depicted in countless number of painted masterpieces. The queen's procession headed northward over land, their eyes taking in the pasture of the foreign country that surrounded them. And at last they arrived at a point where they could just barely make out Jerusalem's glittering white ramparts. And yet something seemed amiss. This is ridiculous. I can't take it anymore. You seem upset, my retainer. Yes, your majesty, I am. We've been stuck in this village without, uh, within the ravine for an entire week. If we don't get moving soon, the soldiers and camel tainers will start to get homesick. What say the messengers we sent ahead along to Jerusalem? Uh, I've sent them countless times, your majesty. I even went to try and negotiate our entry myself. It's just the guards keep inventing new reasons to turn us away at the gate. They're hopeless. Even showing them a list of all the gifts we bring for King Solomon has done little more than warrant a smirk. I see. Then perhaps it's time I meet with them myself. Tell the caravan to loosen their loads and make themselves at ease. Your Majesty? Queen's Lady-in-Waiting. Your Majesty, please, you mustn't go off on your own. There's a flock of sheep coming this way. I'll have the guards chase them off. No need for that. This is not our kingdom. So we shall be the ones to make way. My, these sheep are nice and plump, and their wool is soft and well-kept. This is indeed a rich land. 
<laughs> hey! It is, okay. Well, now it is an everyday one comes across such an esteemed noble. Good day to you. Hmm. Stay back, who are you? As you can see, I'm merely a passing shepherd. A harmless, friendly young man who enjoys nothing more than singing and dancing. And shepherds are... are shepherds so rare where you come from? No, they are not. I do beg your pardon. You must be the travelers that have been staying in this ravine. This place is ill-suited to making camp. Have you run into some manner of trouble on your journey? You are quite perceptive, young shepherd. As luck would have it. I see. It certainly is odd. Jerusalem is supposed to be a city of compassion. A place that'll open its gates to anyone. How terribly embarrassing that it has seemed fit to reject guests who have traveled from so far away. Can you tell us what Jerusalem is like, young shepherd? What do you think of the great king's city? Well, now I can hardly refuse to answer a question from such a beautiful lady, can I? Your majesty, surely there are far better ways to pass time than in the company of this ill-mannered youth. What's wrong with it? I'm having a perfectly lovely time. Unfortunately, I haven't been to the city myself in quite a while, but I do hear rumors from time to time. Jerusalem is a city like no other. It is truly the center of the world. Its ramparts stand tall against any threat, and its palace is the height of luxury. I believe its most beautiful feature is the temple its previous king wished to build really, really badly. They say it's a truly impressive sight. I implore you to pay the vintage yourself after you arrive, my lady. I think I shall do just that. What about the people who live there? Have they no complaints at all? Uh, good question. I suppose I must say, simply say that it seems the king is doing a superb job. Each and every one of his people speaks of him with reverence, with language as lyrical as poetry. They say that he is fair and just, possessed of true wisdom, that he was born to be a perfect king. True wisdom. But ripe fruit inevitably draws pests. The fruit itself may not be to blame, but alas, there is nothing one can do about the laws of nature. Thus do security and abundance inevitably lead to avarice and arrogance. I knew it. Your Majesty? Wait, does this mean the gatekeepers expect us to bribe them? Even after our messengers have long since paid our toll? Well, I'm afraid there isn't much a lowly shepherd like me can do about that. Best I can do is join you in conversation here in the shade for a fleeting moment. Oh, would you also like me to play my harp? No, that will do. Thank you, my good shepherd. By the way, I notice a number of your sheep have injured their legs. Could I buy them off of you so that I may treat my subjects to them? Well, that'd be a great help. I cannot think of a more advantageous trade for both of us. Alright. I just remembered something else that you may find of interest. It is perhaps a bit spooky, but... Spooky. Hidden gates, you say? That's right, gates. Jerusalem is a big place with many people coming in and going. As such, the ramparts contain a number of side gates. A holy gate reserved for God, a gate for chariots, a gate for merchants, a gate for slaves, even a gate for shepherds. And while I don't know whether it really exists or not, I've also heard that there's a forbidden gate for ruach, or spirits. They say it is dark even during the day, and that the dead themselves make use of it. It is always closed and barred, and not even the guards go near it. Huh. Definitely have not heard this Bible story. Thus did the Queen of Sheba learn of the hidden gate into Jerusalem from a mysterious young shepherd. The Queen next stole away to Jerusalem in the middle of the night, taking only a select few of her servants. She decided that if the front gates would not open to her, then she would simply sneak in the back. None of this is written in Holy Scripture, but please do not call it heresy. <laughs> okay, we're in Bible fanfiction territory. No matter how our company may use our imagination to help bring this story to life, it would, not, it would do nothing to diminish King Solomon's greatness or the Queen of Sheba's beauty. I was going to say, don't know this Bible story, and she's just like, yep, we're kind of making this up. If the guards would refuse us passage, then we shall make our own passage into the city. As if crossing the great desert wasn't brazen enough. I never imagined you to be quite so reckless a queen. Ah! These must be some of the city's guards, so this is another trial we must face. If our actions go against the will of God, then this is where our journey will come to an end. 
Please stand back, your majesty. The soldiers will handle this. This is... This is actually pretty cool. Because we're, like... Getting backstory... That's not only for all of FGO, but, like, it's... it's We're going over, like, the, the myth, right, of a character. Because very often, like, you don't actually go over the myth of a character, right? You pretty much only get to go... Oh, oh, this is a bad matchup for you, huh? You pretty much only get to go over the, um... The, uh, you know... Them now. But it's like, well, what about them, you know, in the past? So here's where you get to kind of recreate through their myth, right? And of course, there's there's the fact that the, the fate version is different, right? It's not the same, right? You know, you have how they were in real life versus how they were in fate is different. As we said here, this is not scripture, you know? Don't hate Ozzy. Okay, let's do this. Full seat and I combo. Get some big stuff. Big meter, let's go. Yeah, we're gonna get 100. Okay. Battle 2. Ancient Ghost. You know what? Let's get rid of you. Let's go like that. Make our life easier. Let's see, did that kill him? Totes didn't. I did. No! Heal up, my man. I'd healed a bit. Do some of this, get some more meter. He might die. Grudge is fine. Okay, so let's go... Like this. Kill. Good. Ooh, that was good damage, too. Alright. Final. We got an Ifrita, which is like, sure, yeah, that makes sense to be around in this era, I guess. Increase your gauge and get the low HP. Yep, do that. And do that. And do that. And do that. And do... How much do you get? Not enough. Okay. Let's do... Like this. And then hopefully we'll go back around. Ozzy will get his. And that should be enough, I hope. It is interesting how there's absolutely no, like, elemental matchups in this game at all. No, you know, using ice on fire is good. Not enough. Oh, so close. Okay, well... This will be enough and deal a ton of damage. Oh, we, we won't even need it. Nice. Sayonara. Hey, bonded up. Sounds good. I'll be using him a lot. It's nice to have a big, strong, multi-hit rider. Yep, that's, uh, that's, that's the, the city. And so, the Queen of Sheba's procession fought off the Guardian Spirits, and successfully made their way into Jerusalem. Soon the king learned that a foreign queen had entered the holy city, and the front gates were finally opened. Thus, 
did the parade of camels and ostentatiously dressed attendants make their way through Jerusalem. Though the people of Jerusalem were accustomed to luxury, the riches that the queen presented to the king must have surely made their eyes pop. The lavish spices they brought with them also proved to be incredibly popular, and soon the holy city was filled with their scents. Shortly thereafter, the queen was officially invited to the palace, and at long last, was granted an audience with King Solomon himself. Or is it going to be... Are we going to get someone dressed as... Okay. I was going to say. I was going to say. I couldn't imagine them actually showing just Solomon's sprite. I feel like that would have been... Too much, you know? So I like this. Just the silhouette. How good of you to come, Queen of Sheba. On behalf of my subjects, I welcome you. I extend my hospitality to you and your people. Please stay in my palace. Rest from your journey. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, good King Solomon. Now that this moment has come, the fatigue from my journey has all but vanished. I know who you are. This may be our first time meeting face to face, but I've had opportunities to learn about you. Without fail, the finest jewels and spices brought to Jerusalem come from the southern kingdoms. I've spoken to merchants and travelers about them interested to know more. They told me that a queen from a desert kingdom in the south with a sure eye. They told me of a queen from a desert kingdom in the south with a sure eye and a nose for trade. Until last night, my image of that queen was hazy and blurred like a mirage. But now I see clearly that she is a beautiful desert flower beyond compare. You are too kind, King Solomon. If anything, I am the one in awe of how your grand figure far exceeds the picture I held in my mind. I apologize for the treatment you endured on your journey here, Queen of Sheba. I shall find out how it came to pass and see justice served should it be necessary. If it please you, I shall give you a tour of the palace myself. Will that serve as an apology? A tour from King Solomon himself? I can think of no greater pleasure. Of course, then the pleasure will be mine, I assure you. The two rulers proceeded to walk around Jerusalem's palace, chatting happily all the while. Every one of the dances performed, the harp songs played, and the dishes served was truly exquisite. But the place the Queen of Sheba was most impressed with was indeed the very building the Good Shepherd had told her about. The magnificent Temple of Jerusalem stood even taller than the King's own palace. Atop its great altar, burnt offerings were made to God. There, sacrificial animals and other splendid offerings were consumed by sacred fire. Once these offerings were chosen to become God's food, the frankincense, which would later be chosen to be one of the three wise men's gifts, was burned like firewood. While bearing witness to these amazing spectacles, the queen casually posed to King Solomon a series of questions. Indeed, these very questions were the queen's purpose in venturing to Jerusalem. A quest began in the hopes of appraising the king's wisdom, Distinguishing, uh, yeah, distinguishing his worth and gaining a true answer to questions she had long pondered. Some scholars say the queen had only two questions, while others claim she had as many as nineteen. Whatever their number, King Solomon answered each in turn, and the queen marveled at his wisdom. And in that moment, she decided to entrust King Solomon with the three most precious riddles she carried deep within her heart. Solomon, in turn, honored his noble guest by having his many retainers line up along both sides of his throne. So began a battle of wits to chest, test the merits of both rulers. There be no room for failure. As silence hung in the throne room, the audience watched with bated breath. Great King Solomon, leader of the people of Israel and bearer of boundless wisdom, I humbly request that you answer these questions and share your wisdom with your guests. Very well, speak your questions. There is a room with ten doors, which, when one is open, nine are closed. When nine doors are open, one door is closed. The answer is a person. The room is the womb and the ten doors are the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, navel, and excretory holes. When a person is a fetus, the door of the navel is open. Once they are born, that door is closed forever. O oh, king, you are wise indeed. Speak your next question. Very well then, O oh, king, let me ask you this. These words weigh more than gold or life itself and require four people to carry them. And yet their master has never once seen them. The answer is the Ark of the Covenant. 
The very chest I inherited from my predecessor. It contains the Ten Commandments and the proof of our covenant with God. It is kept in the innermost chamber of my temple, a holy room that is constantly filled with incense. O oh, king, you are truly a man of wisdom. Speak your next question. Very well then, O oh, king, this is my final question. This ocean is calm. A ship sails forward against the wind. The ship's pilot plots a course towards dark clouds. The ship is in no way prepared to weather a storm. Let's see. The answer is... Uh... Hang on, time out. Just give me a second here. Huh? Calm ocean? A ship pilot? What's this all about? Hold on just a moment. I can answer this. Oh yes, great king. Please tell me your answer. Whisper, what's the matter, Solomon? Hurry up and answer her third question. I'm trying, but my script only had two riddles. That can't be right. Wait, I don't see it in mine either. What's going on? I could have sworn Anderson's manuscript had all three, huh? What's this? Don't tell me the great king Solomon can't even answer a simple riddle. Well, what say you, your majesty? I'm following my script to the letter, okay? I don't have any response lines in mine either. Damn it, matter, hurry! I can tell you're enjoying this! Yeah, yeah, I've got your answer right here. Why wouldn't I know it? King Solomon knows everything. Please stay in character! Uh, that riddle is so easy it is not worthy of an answer. What say you, my trusted advisor? Would you like to answer this one in my stead? You may even just offer a hint if you like. Why are the scripts different? Come on, Ringmaster, help me out here! Senpai! Uh... Maybe it's the difference between you two rulers. Rulers, rulers, huh? Oh, oh, here we go. What say you, O King? A fascinating riddle. It cuts the very core of our two perspectives. If I answer incorrectly, then Israel will lose a precious friend indeed. Hmm. The answer is a nation. When a capable sailor takes the helm, the wind may carry him faster than ever. Much as the sea might appear the same everywhere, it is far from a single thing. It is made of numberless droplets altogether. Even when it appears calm, its surface hides unforeseeable waves and maelstroms. It is like the grains of sand that make up a desert, like quicksand lying in wait for its prey. Fun fact about quicksand, you can't actually, like if you're a human and you step in it, you're fine. It compacts down. Quicksand is fake, it's a lie. Very well then, O King, where lies the ship's destination? A ship stops for nothing, but it is not a ship that runs from danger, nor one that drifts upon the waves. It is but driftwood that will sink in the fullness of time. The pilot knows that an unavoidable storm is coming and sounds the alarm. Only a ship that endures tribulation will see the glorious light of day that awaits in the new world. O oh, King, you are indeed a wise leader worthy of this nation. Queen of Sheba, I pray that the Lord our God sees fit to bless you with his protection. You are no mere guest destined to while away her time before my throne. Though your kingdom may be but a mirage that lies to the distant south, I hereby vow that our two nations shall be allies and you, my friend. You are too kind, O King, but I am most heartened that my journey here has proved fruitful. Should you ever be in need of aid in an even greater endeavor, I shall return from beyond the desert and assist you to the best of my ability. Thus did King Solomon and Queen Sheba's battle of wits come to an end. With more awe and respect for Solomon than ever before, the queen set off to return to her home of Sheba. Solomon in turn was happy to give the queen exactly the gift she wished for. As for what became of the prosperous desert kingdom, of the bond between King Solomon and its queen, no biblical scholar can say. All we can do now is imagine the fate of the legendary queen for ourselves. Thank you all for watching. 
This concludes the Tanner Company's special performance of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Hey, that's a lot of claps for like four people. Oh, the wharf. All right, let's finish this one then. What's going on here? Who's this fellow with a face? So this is the Puritan colony of Salem. Just a moment, sir. You have a different art style than us. We finally managed to dock. You're the only cargo we're unloading here, sir. Certainly fine by me, though, since you already paid for passage. Pretty rough storm we had to sail through to get here, though. You're doing all right? I'm on land now. My work is on land where man lives and works. There's no land inhabited by man here or anywhere that is free from sin. Not even Eden itself. Oh, I don't like you. You scare me, sir. Uh, diabetes. Professor Carter, there are people from the village who'd like to see you. They seem pretty upset. There's a good number of them, too. I see. Very well, I'll go and meet them. Pardon me for a moment, Mr. Tanner. We're asking to see you, too, Your Honor. What's this all about? You have a lot to answer for, Mr. Carter. Uncle Tituba is... Abigail, you're here too, Tatuba? Mr. Carter. Did these people bring you here? Again, what's this all about? May I remind you that Tatuba is my servant? I thank you to mind how you treat her. Oh, fine, then listen to me, Mr. Carter. My daughter has been lying face down in bed ill all day. I know when you stopped by this morning, I told you she was just tired from last night's excitement. I thought she would be fine once she got some sleep, but I was wrong. She kept groaning and writhing as if she was fighting off a terrible fever. I tried to give her some bread and water to calm down, but she refused. I was at a loss for what to do next, so I asked the Reverend to come take a look at her. But once he arrived, she seemed to be suffering more than ever. Um, how so, exactly? Well, Reverend? Yes, it seems to me as if... as if she was possessed by the devil himself. She cried out with a shrill and human voice and tried to strangle me with such strength as no child should ever have. We held her down as best we could until she finally passed out and went limp. We then went to change her sheets. Uh-oh! Found this strange and devilish charm within the straw. According to Putnam's daughter, it was Tituba who made it. Oh my. What an evil-looking wooden figure. I'll take that as evidence. Is this true, Tituba? Did you make that? Mr. Carter, it's, well, I've got it all wrong. This isn't Tituba's fault. Anne took it without asking. We could hear the commotion all the way inside. What's going on? Looks like most of the village is here. Is that Tituba they're interrogating in the middle of the crowd? Hmm. I always knew there was something strange about you. Oh, this is dreadful. I don't suppose. Were you the one who had those Indians kill the Williamses? Stop that. William's girl is right there. You're a witch! That's a tool used in blasphemous curses. I suspect this woman is guilty of heresy. Whoa. Who are you? The name's Matthew Hopkins. I just arrived here on a boat from Boston. As of tonight, I've been appointed Salem's head judge by order of the governor. Who do you think you are barging in here all? What's this? Oh my, this really is an official notice of appointment. And that of a superior judge, no less. I apologize for my rudeness. I had no mind. These are extraordinary circumstances. People of Salem, I first ask that you calm yourselves and regain your composure. The devil's power is at its height in the hours after dark. We must not let our fears guide our decisions. I hereby order that the slave be taken into custody and interrogated. I'll hear what she has to say in the morning. Uh, Tatuba's in danger. Don't do it, Tanner. I mean, Master. 
Please, just stay out of it. You can't interfere here. You need to remain a bystander right now, or you'll get swept up in this as well. What do you mean? Can't you tell? It's begun. I'm glad to see that you are willing to cooperate. Mr. Carter is their owner. I'd like you to accompany her to the town's holding cells. All right, I will accompany you. Mr. Carter. Miss Mash, Mr. Tanner. I'm sorry to trouble you, but could I ask you to take Abigail home for me? I know I can trust you in your troop. You all proved that in your play. Mm. Abby, this is awful. My poor Tituba. Dang. Dang. Dang da dang dang dang. All right, well, got nut. Anyways, holy crap! <laughs> this is ridiculous! How many? Like, it's so much! Okay! <laughs> Thank you all for watching! We barely got through the first node! Wow! Okay! We'll see you guys next time for some more A Grand Order, where we uh, continue on through these massive nodes! We'll see you then for that, guys. Ciao.